Test Chamber returns with a look at Platinum Games' and Sega's Anarchy Reign. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Andrew Reiner. I got Tim Turry playing the game. Hello. And you reviewed it for Game Informer. I did. And uh, right now, we're just kind of flying around in, on the title screen, checking out some GoBots, Transformers. Yeah, there's a couple of robots uh, on the cast. That guy is like a super stereotypical pimp. Uh, you got your a couple uh, of your you know Japanese martial artist lady types. Okay, she looks like she could be in Mortal Kombat. They're playing um, poker. I believe these characters are new to Anarchy Reigns, and you're going to get a couple that are from Mad World. Uh, she was playing the Game Shield. Do you see that? That's right. Uh, he's from Mad World. That's Leo. Jack is from Mad World. Sasha's not, um, and then it, it cycles around. Ah, but whoa! Yeah, they, they really crotch. they really go for it there. Yeah, you don't so. want to see Cyborg Crotch. No. So let's just hop into... Um, we'll do campaign and then we'll conclude with multiplayer. How's yeah. that sound? Okay. Oh, and just to give... Wow, look at that guy eat! He's super into it. He's kind of like the Blanca of the game. Uh, the whole point of this is post-apocalyptic. Some toxic waste crap mutated everybody. And this guy is a bad guy. <laughs> he is like semi-responsible for killing Jack's daughter, I guess. And so he wants revenge and then... You can choose to play as either um, Jack from Mad World or Leo, and it's kind of black or white side. Uh, Leo is like this investigator agent dude, and that's his former mentor. Um, the story is pretty ridiculous in a really fun way, actually. Like the cutscenes are pretty goofy. The single player campaign it leaves a little bit to be desired. It's okay. kind of grindy, but overall, uh, the, the story is is fun. How many teams does Platinum Games have? Man, I don't know, because like, uh, that news about them working on three games in 2013. Yeah, they have Bayonetta 2. Yeah. Uh, that other game, P100, or whatever that ended up being on Wii U. That's a really fun game. They just finished this. Yeah. So then they have another one? I'm so stoked for Bayonetta 2. Um, well, I suppose Metal Gear. Revengeance. Um, but really? Holographic balls hollow, in the future? Hollow Pool. But speaking of Bayonetta, if you pre-ordered the game, uh, she's a playable character. So there's 18 playable characters, including Bayonetta. And is there separate campaigns for all 18 of them? And No. So it's you just choose between Jack and Leo in okay. the beginning. And that's it? Yeah. And then all the other characters are just multiplayer? Yeah. As you play, like a few of them are unlocked in the beginning. I think it's like eight or so. And as you play through the campaign, you're going to unlock uh, the rest of the characters. So Bayonetta is only in multiplayer? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you know, I was playing online, and I was getting my ass kicked by a dude that was playing Bayonetta, and it was really cool. Like she does the thing where the portals open, and like her giant hair fists come out and punch you, and um, yeah. I can't wait to see that second game. No, I'm I'm really excited. Is that Wii U exclusive? As of we as yep. we know, okay. Yeah, Nintendo's publishing. That's well, good for Nintendo. Yeah, it's a, I think that's a good score. I know it didn't. The first game didn't sell very well, mm. but. Uh, Everybody seems to love it that played it. Yeah. Speaking of first games, uh, like we said, uh, characters from Mad World here, but obviously Mad World was like a really black and white, cell shaded, mm -hmm. stylish game. It's cool. I didn't play any of Mad World, but I watched a lot of the coverage for it. Love is, that game. Is it fun? Yeah. I should go back and that was check one of my favorite Wii U, or favorite Wii games. Okay. I should definitely check it out because Jack seems like a fun, stupid character. Uh, what's his name? It's gr I'm trying to remember the the voice actor's name. It's the guy that does. Uh, He's in, he does Bolt Storm. He does that voice. Uh, uh, I think it's Alan something or another. But anyway, he does a really good job here. Really over the top chainsaw hand murderer. Um, Gold nuggets, huh? Yeah. This guy's looking for something. I can't remember what. I think that people reading the cutscenes probably know that. Yeah, I saw the this titles. scene in Star Wars. Yeah. So the whole thing oozes, you know platinum style their their cutscenes are actually really good despite the, the campaigns you know mediocre to okay quality um the uh the cutscenes are fun yeah the characters look great you get off on looking through everyone's dirty laundry that's another thing i said about the game is that like the character models are actually really good and like the animations are solid uh everything in the campaign sort of surrounding them isn't as much but it's something i love about video games and comic books and animation to well maybe not so much animation but they always want every aspect of a, of a character model to have some kind of detail yeah especially like platinum games oh absolutely just looking at his arms you know there's chains there's bands there's all this stuff on it it's kind of like nomura a little bit you know comic books like, like to do all sorts of veins that don't make sense oh just 
I love those those proportionate like when they when they try to like draw a real life interpretation of a you know some pose that a comic book character has and you realize their back would be broken in like three places and this guy's got like Tesla coils um, he's like one of the leaders of this uh, you know intelligence cyborg they're called cybrids I think <laughs> okay. uh, which is a nice little little uh, mashup there and he has like Tesla coil things he's very Russian. I don't like seeing him in color. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, I guess he's a blondie. All right. Let's just turn off the color on our TV. Uh, I'm going to go black side. Uh, he gives me a Baird feeling, you know? I think it's because he's... The goggles? Goggles, blonde. <laughs> he looks like a... Uh, just a gigantic... Uh, he reminds me... Everyone seems like they're modeled after the gigantic guy in Fighting Force. Um, that's like where epic took their cue or something so you're gonna start off with some pool it looks like uh that'd be a really interesting way to to launch a tutorial <laughs> this will have no effect on anything no. you do in the rest of the game but and if uh, you if you save the fun. eight ball early quick game over quick game over yeah those are some hairy arms yeah the guy's mad oh he makes all sorts of uh, i don't think we'll get to him but he makes all sorts of bull puns you know he says um like bull a lot. Well, there's a lot of swearing in this game, or there can be sometimes. So, just as a heads up, if you're offended or uh, easily <laughs> what offended, what other puns or, can you do with bull? There's there are so many of them. Like I'm gonna take you out to pasture, or oh, okay. you know, they gotcha. go they take they go that route. Um, oh, and there's that guy uh, that just has like a metal groin. So, got these uh, Jason Voorhees rejects that I'm gonna take care of. Now he had a chainsaw arm in Mad World, right? It wasn't just he wasn't just carrying one. Uh, I don't remember actually. So I think said, maybe he just carried one. Up. Okay, I'll have to I'll have to bust it out. So essentially, what it's what it's explaining right now is that you have to un earn points in uh, single player to because like all the mission and uh, side quests are points gated. So after I kill enough of these guys, we'll unlock that. Uh, so they're not sorry. human, obviously. They're exploding into oil, or they are mutants. So the fact that they're um, uh, like infected with this toxic waste, um, they uh, they have this weird like blue septic blood, and it's a real problem for them, I guess. I don't know. And so I, I killed enough guys, so it unlocks the first side mission, which means that um, I'll do this one. Hopefully, earn enough points to. Unlock a main mission, which will pit me against, um, you know, the first... I think it's the bull guy is the first real guy you fight. Um, so this... And this is really, you know, sort of indicative of the rest of them. Defeat 50 enemies. You got five minutes to do it. That is what most of the single-player uh, mission structures are. Either that or fight this one guy. Sometimes you'll be in a helicopter doing, like, machine gun... Like, strafing machine gun fire or launching missiles, but... It's pretty unimaginative and grindy. What else do they do other than kill totals? Uh, very little. Okay. Like sometimes it'll so start. So it's just a game about kicking the crap out of dudes. Yes. Um, and to explain the mechanics a little bit, so I punch these guys and work up those. Uh, there's a health meter, which is like the uh, the yellow yellow bar, and then there's the four segmented parts. Mm -hmm. And as I punch guys, just regular attacks, those fill up, and then I can hold down the left trigger and use my chainsaw attacks. I have light chainsaw attacks and heavy ones, um, which are just X and Y. You know, really, really classic action game feel when it comes to, you know, combos and combat. Oh, and crap like that happens. Uh, that'll happen in multiplayer, too. There'll just be a giant death truck that just <laughs> screams through the arena. I like um, that. Kind of like the tank in Uncharted. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or a plane will crash, or there'll be a bombing run, or a black hole will open. Uh, it can really turn the tides of battle on a, on a, on the spot. You can also do like a charge move. Let's see if I can pull it off. Uh, or you can do grabs. How's the so, soundtrack? Oh, pretty obnoxious overall. <laughs> uh, it's if you don't like bad hip hop, I just feel like it's not going to be for you. Uh, I, I, I like some of the beats and I like some of the, um, you know, the feel that it gave to some of the, the missions, even if I'm not a big hip hop fan, but man, like you'll, it'll play the same song over if you like fail something, like you'll, you'll hear it again. Is there any point to exploring the world other than finding ways to, uh, take guys out? Yeah, there's hidden vaults, um, that have like 
concept art and you mm. know little unlockable things like that nothing too crazy but you can find a few secrets um, and then you know of course there's throwable items um, nice yeah it's kind of nice to oh these guys throw multiple cocktails let's see if I can get this going so you can hold down Y oh crap so you hold down Y and no. do, do like this charge attack but these guys have multiple cocktails so it's gonna be a problem and there's varying levels of that charge attack I'm just gonna get down to, to business here and murder these guys there's a robot so I could have played as as Leo. Also, their their campaigns are pretty much cover the same ground, slightly but a little bit differently. Like the last part of it in Leo's campaign, you know, someone flips a switch and the entire area, like this arena, is geomorphed and looks completely different. Um, but they're they're pretty much the same. Now I heard you talking uh, upstairs to I think Joe Juba, um, saying that the game is surprisingly long. Yeah, I was really like surprised. He thought the by end it. was coming, but then it was another three hours or something mm-hmm. like that. I was wondering if it was two separate campaigns that were pretty much just like you want to play as this character, or that character. But it ends up if you beat one of them, uh, you are immediately put into uh, playing as like. So if I beat it as Jack, then I'll replay it all as Leo, and then they sort of unite, and you get this, or they don't unite, but like the campaigns unite. Um, I don't want to give anything away, but uh, and then there's this extra campaign, like a little brief campaign at the end. And it did surprise me how long it is, especially with... And it feels long, too, just with how grindy some of these missions Whoa! get. Killer Croc. Yeah, exactly. And a mask. He's got a burlap sack. So it's if, if Killer Croc was in Friday the 13th 2, part 2, this is, this is basically what we got. Or became a, a part of Scarecrow's gang. Yeah. Oh, so I guess I can show... I'll, I'll nice. show off this... Uh, you know, you can go into like this rage and just mash the X button. <laughs> and this is really fun and satisfying during uh, multiplayer also, because dudes just run from you when you go saying like that. It's just they sprint. That's the only defense. So that was the end of mission one. Uh, actually, the first side mission. So if you look at my mission total there, I'm about, uh, you know, a couple thousand away from the next unlock. That next unlock will be the main mission. Okay. For this area, which is the one that actually drives the story forward. So I kill a couple more guys, and then um, we can see the first main mission, unless, you know, we want to move on. And then before we go to multiplayer, you were talking about some button holds and stuff. What are the basic controls? What are you doing on um, shoulder buttons, or is it mostly face buttons? Yeah, so X and Y are heavy and light attack, and then you have left button, which modifies those into um, the chainsaw versions, like the special version, which is dependent on that green segmented uh, thing, and our meter, I should say. And then you have um, right trigger blocks. If you hold right trigger in A, you'll dodge. Um, B is grab. Um, you know, you can hit X and A together to do like this combo breaker. And uh, the left bumper uh, or R1 if you're playing PlayStation 3 is all like the lock on button. Or, yeah, it's basically the lock on button. You can flick between targets. Oh, here's the big bull guy. So this is this is sort of how they um, they incorporate the the you know other the roster into the story gotcha. you'll kind of fight them throughout it and jack fights a certain amount and leo fights a certain amount so by playing both campaigns you unlock everyone for multiplayer <laughs> just talking to a bunch of random mechanical bulls yep <laughs> that's right so this is these are where all those uh those bull puns all right well i think that's a pretty good look at, at single player let's move on to multi all right Tim jumped into a multiplayer game called Death Ball. Yes, I did. Um, hopefully, I don't completely blow out while I'm trying to play at the same time. But uh, this is one of the more unique modes in the game. Uh, this is basically kind of like a rugby match. Uh, oh, my God. We're doing all right. And, uh, you know, we have to hold possession while that meter hold builds up. And then you score. You can pass it. Uh, you can throw it into the goal or run it in. And the entire time, you know, you can be doing pile drivers and beating the crap out of people to run defense. Um, the normal multiplayer modes are mostly like just huge death matches where you're just beating the crap out of each other. Um, but this is one of the more inventive ones. This and Capture the Flag really got my attention. Um, this one really changes up. Like you play it for about 10 solid minutes and then whoever scores the most points within that. Uh, wins. I like seeing you on defense there, Tim. I'm sure, you know, I don't want... Team player. Yeah, I don't want to hot dog it. I gotta tell you, uh, I flash back as soon as this arena loaded up to Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball on Super Nintendo. Oh, really? Yeah, I was like, oh. It's, uh, it's definitely more fun than all that. Uh, 
I had a really good time with this. I got, our team got just wasted. It was like, it was like 13 to three or something they won, but I had a really good time with it. Uh, Cause it's just so different. It feels kind of like, oh, okay. All right. Do your part, Tim. Yeah, yeah Tim. Here we go. Oh, what? Okay. All right. Wait, what just where happened? is it? Where is it? Yeah. So you gotta get him. Oh, not on my watch. Come on. Nope. All right, so I, one thing that just occurred to me, a really good move in this would be to do that hold down Y in your charge attack, because you just sprint after the person. Um, seems like they've run a little bit slower with the ball, but this is just, the game, the gameplay is really uh, unique, like this sort of multiplayer online. It feels like you're playing sort of an action slash fighting game online, which is a lot of fun. And you know, if you're looking for something different, it's only 30 bucks. You know, I gave it a 7.5 in my review, which isn't like, the most glowing score, but for what it is, um, that that price point is a little bit more attractive. And this is a different type of multiplayer game. There's also standard combat. Rats. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, what other what other matches? Just like huge 16 player battle royales, um, four on four team deathmatch, capture the flag, uh, two on two on two, or sort of like you know multi team stuff. There's just one on one cage fights. If you want more of a regular fighting game experience, I had a good time with that. Um, you know, any type of tracking or leveling up or anything like that. Um, yeah, you can unlock some, um, some, oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Uh, you, you can unlock some, I guess I'm passing to myself like Speedy <laughs> Gonzalez. Uh, you can unlock some of the, uh, go, like, like Tim! some of these, oh gosh, sorry. I'm having the hardest time concentrating. Uh, <laughs> you can unlock little modifiers like, oh, I don't want to, you know, take damage when I do my combo breaker, or I want to do more damage during a standard combo. Uh, things like that, just to give you a little bit of edge, kind of see what your play style is like, and then modify it from there. And, oh, get him, Tim. Oh, did he break that? Okay. Yeah, what yeah. are you doing to his head? Deal with that, buddy. All right, yes, guys, let's get go. the ball out of let's there. Let's go, let's go. All right, I got your back. Let's you go. You got this, guys. Like Bo Jackson and Tecmo Bowl. No one's yeah. going to touch him. Throw it. Oh, wait, there's someone. They have someone running deep down there. Throw oh, the crap. Ball. Yeah, you can throw it in, which is... Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Tim. Maybe I should attack because... Yes, yes, yes. This is kind of exciting. Let's go. Let's go. Pass it. Pass it. Pass it. See? Ball right. hog. What a yeah. ball hog, but great teamwork. I know. But anyway, this is pretty fun. The whole game's pretty pretty neat. There's some there's some camera problems. Single player's pretty lacking. It gets a little too chaotic sometimes. The characters are kind of samey. Like, none of them really feel that different from each other. And for a kind of fighting game type thing going on, that's sort of disappointing, but... And you know, your overall score was... You're saying the game's okay. It was like a 7-5 seven, five seven, or something. 7-5, five. Right? yeah. It's, okay. it's, a, it's nothing great. You know, they... I have, I'm having a good time with it, but uh, it's it varies from match to match, and the campaign's a grind and probably not worth going out of your way for if that's the only reason you'd want to buy the game. Um, but, you know, if you've got $3 laying around and you're interested in some weird multiplayer stuff with some rough edges, um, you could do a lot worse. So it's it's a, it's definitely a, one of Platinum's more average experiences. Well, thanks for showing us this, Tim, and uh, thank you all for watching. And, uh, you know... Come back to GameInformer.com and check out more episodes of Test Chamber in the future.